Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we are going to begin by verifying my transmission range settings since that was a topic in the previous video. And indeed, uh, I have I think I had it at 3.87 or something uh, for the DSM modifier previously and I bumped it up to just above 4 now, 4.05. And the range modifier is at 1, which is what people said in the comments. This is what it's supposed to be for JNSQ. And so just verifying again, but yes, it was like that already. Uh, but the thing is, it's not really the range necessary, necessarily, uh, though I guess it was stretching it. I mean, we had a lot of antennae that we needed in order to get over to Duna. And we've got a very big system now of JNSQ. We've got extra planets and everything. But... Mainly it was the transmission speed that was perplexing, especially the Duna side. Eve was transmitting fine, but Duna was not transmitting fine. So the transmission speed is more of an issue because we can't store the sciences, right? If we could just store the sciences, then it doesn't matter if it takes a long time to get the transmissions done. But since the missions can only stay in the SOIs of like Ike for a short period of time, sometimes, or if we're flying by something, it has to capture the signs quickly, transmit, or have some storage capacity, we're somewhat limited. So we have to find a science. We gathered some extra science last time, and we can unlock something. And the only thing I could find was uh, here there's a hard drive capacity upgrade. It only says double the capacity. I hope that's Real. I mean, sample capacity 9 slots, I don't know. File capacity none. Uh, it's really not giving me the numbers that make me happy. Uh, so I'm a little bit suspicious of this hard drive capacity upgrade. But it's the only thing I found. I wish there was just a hard drive part that Kerbalism had. And it really is. You see, JNSQ can increase the antenna ranges, but JNSQ isn't managing the transmission rate, the bandwidth. So. That's all Kerbalism, and Kerbalism is what limited the bandwidth to a very low amount. I really want miniaturization, not that, but I guess we have enough for both. This has a sample storage upgrade, but we haven't been collecting that many samples. So I'm just going to get the this one and see what we can do with that. Now, a mission that had been constrained because of our inability to transmit very quickly was this aim at the moon and miss mission. Uh, we had launched this mission, but it wasn't able to store these uh, because it's supposed to be on an escape trajectory. I don't know, maybe we can fudge it and maybe it could actually capture into orbit to make sure it gets all the signs first and then end up on an escape trajectory. I don't know if it needs to perform these experiments while on the escape trajectory, you see. So maybe it'll work out that we could just get the science done and then go on escape trajectory. Uh, but we'll see. So we this had a problem that it couldn't get the science done in time because we left it on an interplanetary trajectory. Um, technically, it's in, not an interplanetary, but anyway, we ended up on an interplanetary traje trajectory. So we'll, we'll try this again. There's also a whole rescue Langley and get a green stone back thing. There's this polar orbit one. Uh, we could capture into this orbit. It doesn't say... Uh, location low over the moon. It just says space. So maybe any space will do for these, in which case the high location that we have here we find. But I also noticed a much more lucrative thing here is a grand tour that involves flying by the moon, Minmus, Duna, and Ike. So we would have to go out there. But it gives a nice advance that would definitely help us to unlock the R&D building. So right now we have bare, I don't think we have enough. It's like 900,000 to unlock the R&D building. This will give us enough, but not enough buffer. But the completion would definitely give us enough. And it's worth way more than anything else that we've got. So we'll try this. And the same mission that we're doing this science on for aiming at the moon and miss, we'll have a transfer over to Minmus, do some science and then move on to Duna and Ike with these instruments. I, I think we had the micrometeoroid and the magnetometer already, but we didn't have the microwave spectrometry data. So yeah, we are going to pick this one up. Okay, and there's also a flag planting on Minmus. 
I figure when we get down to doing the Lanley Greenstone one, I'll have Lanley plant the flag, hopefully, and get the Greenstone. Uh, so we, we have a flag planting thing here. So we'll just pick that up, have Lanley plant the flag on Minmus, grab a Greenstone and come back is the idea. So yeah, we've got the flat, plant flag on Minmus. So we're going to try these things. Now, whether we need to spend some more money on stuff, it lets me get started on building things and see if we need... Miniaturization is tempting, of course, but let me see if we really need anything else. Okay, well, this was the previous Wayfarer probe, and I don't see what hard drive capacity increase there is. Uh, we still have only two megabytes limited. It's not even doubling it, so... Something was totally wrong about that. I don't know, I haven't found anything that I need to unlock, uh, you know, anything to purchase. I got the science, but I don't see any associated purchase with the hard drive upgrade or anything like that. Um, maybe, hold on, let me just save this Wayfarer probe as its own thing. And we'll add more comms to it, of course. But let me just see, maybe I have to unlock it. Well, there's a big engine right there. Uh, unlock it in the R&D building. The only reason I got electrics is for the upgrade. Now, do we need an Octo? Does Octo have double? Octo has a lot more hard drive space, actually. 16.28. So, but when we talk about gigabytes overall, and we still need the Wayfarer because otherwise it's not a Wayfarer probe. That's a requirement of the contract. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll put an uh, Octo on top of it or something. But here it said... If you add another platter to the drive, they can double the capacity of the hard drive, right? But it didn't... Well, uh, it looks like I have to purchase it, so let me purchase it here. Let me just see what happens, but we might get the Octo to really do things. Okay, let's see. No, this still has two. Let me say, what happens if I bring a new one out? I mean, the thing is, in the description... On the side, it didn't indicate that. Nope, still two megabytes. See, so I don't know. I don't know what I just paid for. These really look like they ought to be at least hexes, but uh, fine. We'll just add a bonus octo to this to increase the hard drive space. I like the octo anyway. You know, added, added expense and weight though. But. 130 megabytes altogether. Hopefully this still counts as a Wayfarer probe even though it's mostly Octo. Alright, I'll continue building this. We'll, we have the instruments we need. We just might want a better propulsion unit and also a better antenna like the ones that we used for the EVE slash Duna mission. Well, in the process of building, I've decided that it is at least time to unlock the VAB so that we can use more than 30 parts. So we've already got the launch pad upgrade and we don't need any more of that. But we'll finally be able to get basic action groups. I probably won't use them. I prefer the numbered action groups anyway. So yeah, it's about time. So we'll spend the money on that even though it'll delay when we can do the R&D building upgrade. And we won't have to talk about 30 parts anymore. Okay, so for the Wayfarer 2 mission, we actually have not used more than 30 parts, even though I could have. And maybe I could throw on a launch clamp, but I don't feel the need to since we're not using the hydrogen here. We're just using the normal Prometheus Palace engine, which uses liquid fuel and oxidizer throughout. And then a Decker engine here, because we'll need to have it do stuff when we get to the moon and potentially transfer us to Minmus and everything. So uh, we don't want boil off in this case. And I'm not up to using radiators yet. We'll have to test that out some other time. I've got the big antenna array that we had before. Uh, we've got these guys here, two high gain antennas like that. And maybe I could toss on some extra antennae, but I think the plan for this will be to get into orbit around the moon and wait and then uh, move on and hopefully the contract will be okay with that. Let's try to get regular alarm clock. Oh, it's up here. Uh, we have 230 days into the Duna window. The goal is to get that contract for 
the aim at the moon and miss done with this and then transfer it to Minmus and continue on our way for the Minmus 4 rally and so we will eventually need to go over to Duna but we have 230 days for that so the goal is to transmit all the data in that 230 days. Yeah, so plenty of time but will we get it done is the question. I've I put a site experiment in here. I've assumed that telemetry we've probably already got for Moon, Minmus, Duna and Ike. So we've got a mite here on this one, a site here on this one, and action groups, uh, we don't have, I, I, I could of course be, like use the abort action group for uh, for the experiments, but or the light action group. Uh, I'll, I'll just activate them manually, it's fine. Uh, at least, you know, we don't have to press it every time we get into a new area. They just continually run anyway, so it's not that big a deal. As far as what we've got here, um, well, we just toss on some extra boosters just in case. Uh, we've got, I think, enough Delta V, but we are going to many different places, so it's somewhat complicated. And you know what? I will put on the extra dishes because uh, we did not have quite enough comms at Duna and I, of course all we have to do is fly by them so it doesn't say that we have to recover the thing that flies by them either it's a fairly lenient sort of contract considering how much it pays uh, so we will put on these as well I don't think they were the cause of any problem so we will take advantage of having more than 30 parts available but of course mm, this ooh, I didn't want them to turn that way well, we'll cut down on our Delta V a bit, but they're not that heavy, actually. I'll make the fairing a little bit bigger. We've got two RTGs on the probe, just in case. Per usual. But... Uh, we also have the solar panels. Especially when we get to do that Ike, of course, the RTGs will be better, but we only have two of them. So, that might be underdoing it. Oh heck, we're getting paid a lot by the contract anyway. Let's go ahead and put four. All right. As usual, we are spending as much as I think we need. We have three ant engines just in case one gets messed up. After all, even with the high quality, it's only got a 23 minute burn time and with just one we need 15 minutes. So we've got extra there too. The Decker, we only have one, though. Alright, so that's the mission. Let us take it out to the pad and see how it goes. Oh, hold on a sec. I've got some mob propellant here. We aren't using any mob propellant at all, so let me recover that and dump that. That'll help. Okay, now here we go. So, SAS on, bottle up, and... Uh, maybe we should ignite the core engine first so it can spool, spool up and go. Alright. Does have the Titan whoop thing. Let's hide Kerbal Warm Plot for now. Alright, should we pass the speed of sound? Everything looking okay. Might be going too steep on the SRVs still. For some reason the clouds don't work out quite the way they do with realism overhaul and RSS visual enhancements. I don't know. I don't know how to make them work that way, but... Alright, off go the boosters. Okay, a little bit more wobbly suddenly. Now, well, with any luck we should use very little of the Decker stage. It may orbit, but we still will need to use some. Okay, separation, and let me just make sure, the ignition, alright, and fairings, okay, somebody had suggested that maybe the science was being transmitted on one of the non-optimal antennae, I don't know, I think they just transmit on whatever altogether, not just uh, one antenna, but I'm not sure. When it comes to the Duna mission, I mean. 
Well, we haven't done the site, so I'll run that while we're waiting around here. I forget if that doesn't look... Oh, unmet requirements for might. I don't know. I guess we're in the wrong place. I should have checked that. Okay, I'm getting too high. Let me just... Sh well, let's see. I did high quality. Yeah, okay, I'll shut it down. Let's see. Well, can we just straight transfer to the moon without making orbit first? Yeah, I think yeah, I think we can. Uh, that apoapsis is a bit high, but we'll just build in our orbital burn into our transfer burn, and it'll be fine. Now we have a contract to get into a polar orbit. It didn't have any other specifications, no need for any particular instruments. But we first have to get into the low orbit to satisfy the aim at the moon and miss requirements. So we'll do that first. But we should aim for a polar orbit. And it doesn't that does have a longitude of ascending node and everything. It's this orbit we see here. Um, I think we can sort of make the situation a little bit better. It's closer, I think. Well, at least we're going around in the right direction. We'll take that for now. I don't know if the site finished. It didn't. <laughs> I guess we'll get a bit of it done and then some other probe will have to finish that off. Data empty. I guess, uh... It doesn't need to store that one. This one is just a uh, transmit like that. I don't know why that one doesn't use the Kerbalism system. And we never got the micrometeoroid impact data from low That's starting to fill the data there. Uh, the solar panels are clipping the tank. Ugh. So yeah, the goal for this stage is going to be to capture around the moon, transfer to Miss, capture around Minmus, and then transfer, start the transfer to Duna. The ant engines will handle most of the transfer to Duna, capture around Duna, and fly by Ike. Well, we'll still be a little bit off here. Uh, electric charge is going down quite a lot. Looks like even four RTGs was not enough. Uh, it's mostly the magnetometer, I think. Mostly, but not exclusively. Sight is doing quite a lot. Well, I guess we'll just have to make sure the solar panels get sunlight. Let's see. But that doesn't bode well for Duna and all. Okay, well, with the solar panels going, let's see if we can restart the magnetometer safely. Well, still okay. All right, well, we might as well run them if we can. We got microwave spectrometry spectrometry data thing there. Well, just out of curiosity, our bandwidth is 13.43 kilobytes per second, so that's fairly good. We've already transmitted 5.3 credits. But is it going to be good enough? We'll find out. I really should have packed more electric charge on here. I didn't think two probe cores would have so little, but... Okay, I'll take that for now. Okay, on to lunar... no, Mooner. Mooner SOI. We got some extra site data from in space high over some of the sites. Okay, Moon. Now, what is it going to say about stuff here? Flyby Moon, it's already checked that off. It doesn't really even talk about the escape trajectory here. Maybe we don't even need to worry about that. Maybe it just wants the experiments. And it doesn't even care about the es escape trajectory. So we're still at 13.43 kilobits uh, kilobytes per second. And... 
Micrometeoroid is running, it says five hours right now. Microwave spectrometry, it says we've done, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, maybe we'll just stop the site, since that's not critical right now. And we'll not worry about the mite either. Now it says four days for the micrometeoroid impact data. Well, we will try to get into orbit around the moon. We have to make that orbit for that one contract anyway. And we will hope that does not invalidate anything, the fact that we make orbit in order to get this science, and it'll be a loose orbit. I mean, it seems like it wants the experiments high anyway. We might as well not go too low since we're going to have to correct in order to get to that orbit. We're not super far off, but we're, we're going to need to do an inclination correction. So, turn back to the sun. For now, we won't worry about that part. Okay, continuing to try to get the data. It doesn't seem to mind the fact that we've captured, even though it requested us to be on an escape trajectory, in the contract anyway. Yeah, actually, uh, let, let me, we'll time warp to Apoapsis and then we'll boost up here. But yeah, this current orbit should have sunlight pretty well. But we might as well time warp to over here. And... That's probably overdoing it. I mean, so far this probe has gotten 60 science credits. Not bad. Okay, we are approaching our corrections again to the satellite orbit, the polar satellite contract orbit. And... Well, magnetometer hasn't really progressed much. It's running, though. The micrometeoroid impact's almost done. That's almost done. We're about to finish. Okay, well, it says none there. Well, it says transmitted. Yeah, yeah, the micrometeoroid impact data has finished. So it's just the magnetometer now. Looking good. Ah, oh, we don't have comms. Probably by the time we get to periapsis next, we'll have transmitted the magnetometer one too. Okay, we got the magnetometer scan, and aim at the moon and miss is complete. Okay, so all we need to do is get it into that orbit, and then we can move on to Minmus. I'm resisting putting... Uh, Another satellite around Kerbin, unless they pay for one. Okay, let's try it. Is that good enough? Yeah, it's good enough. Maintaining stability. Okay, we've got that done. All right, on to Minmus. And then the much more ambitious part where we have to go to Duna and Ike. That's a whole other thing, but at least we'll have gotten two contracts done. If we go right now, it's probably not optimal. But I'll just eject out of moon space now. And then we'll figure it out in Kerbin space. Site data is all done too. So basically, we're done with this around the moon. It's not able to do anything extra. Okay, verifying the comms before starting to burn. I mean, we're in a really good position overall, so if it takes comms away from us, it's cheating. Okay, go. Okay. Let's just uh, try. Oh, I guess we didn't really escape. A little bit more. There we go. All right. We were just trying to escape, doing nothing extra there. And then correcting inclination with respect to Minmus. And that'll get us a tangency over there. Oh, I saw. Well, who knows? Let's just focus on correcting the inclination and then we'll figure out if we get an encounter later. Okay, so once again, orienting for power. 
and once again heading out into current space. Got some high, uh, moon space high over notable craters there. Notable craters. Anything to avoid giving us special credit for each crater. We gotta hasten things by getting into a lower orbit first so that we can get an encounter. Yep, because the site data is surface biome dependent, we're getting a whole bunch of it. Okay, to so bring our orbit down a bit. Okay, going around, and we have an encounter with Minmus, just fine. Well, we still have plenty of time before this has to head over to Duna. So, we're probably going to park it at Minmus. And while it's hanging out, waiting to go to Duna, we're going to do the other mission to rescue Lanley. And then have Lanley plant a flag and pick up a sandstone. Now that we have a higher pad capacity and we don't have to be limited to 30 parts, we're going to try to do that in one launch instead of the three launch plan. And so we'll see how that goes. But I think I'll do that in the next video. I'll cook something up off camera and then explain it at the start of the next episode. And maybe with our science that we've gotten, we now have 356 science, Maybe I'll unlock some technology that will help with the mission. We're going to have to keep in mind that we're going to have to plop off a uh, space capsule into low Earth orbit before transferring over to Minmus so that when we get back with Lanley, Lanley can get into that capsule to come back in through the atmosphere, atmosphere because we still do not trust any of the capsules to actually bring us down safely, so that's a little bit of uh, trouble. And on our Duna mission, we're going to have to pack a nice powerful relay, which means that we might want to find a way to unlock really long-range relay antenna. I don't know if there's a technology that we can unlock prior to unlocking the R&D building that will give us something like that. But we will see. I don't suppose the relay antennae can make use of the non-relay antennae, so that would be probably too optimistic. All right, Minmus. Minmus sort of looking more moon-like than the moon, except it's just a shade of, slight shade of green. Okay, that should be able to get the low over Minmus as well as high over Minmus science. We will make sure that it is recharging. And that the science is all going to get done. Probably on the opposite side of Minmus, its batteries will run out occasionally, but, but hopefully it'll be okay. So let's just see. Observe IR radiation. Not enough space on hard drive. Oh, okay, well. No storage space. It's already doing the other stuff. The micrometeoroid impact data is running. And the magnetometer doesn't have enough space. So it'll take some time, but un we have about 200 days until it needs to transfer. So it probably will get done with everything that it's uh, doing here. So next time we are going to do another mission to Minmus, this time a larger mission to Minmus. And it's probably going to be co more costly than I would like, considering we're trying to save up for the VAB, up oh, sorry, the R&D upgrade. And, but we'll give it a go and hopefully we can rescue Landley, plant a flag and grab a green sandstone. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.